Now, house prices are rising at their fastest rate for nearly four years. London and the South East are leading the way, but house prices are now going up in all areas of the UK. These latest figures will ratchet up the pressure on the Bank of England to do something to take the steam out of the housing market. Our economic editor Paul Mason is here. Well, if you happen to own a house, this sounds quite good news, but should we be worried? Um, paying for it ultimately is the problem. Um, house prices rose on average across Britain in the last year by 9.9%. That's high, but it's probably manageable. In London, it's 18.7%. Just to translate that into real figures, the average house price in London is now a staggering £485,000. But that price has risen by 90000 in the last year. So what you're getting is that people can legitimately say, hey, my house is earning more than I am. And when economists and economic journalists hear people saying that, they know what they're seeing. It's a bubble. And it's not sustainable because wages are not rising. Inflation is very low. So what do the authorities intend to do about all There's this? There's a committee uh, that's charged with sorting this, this out, the Financial Policy Committee, and uh, it's been meeting today. Some members on it, we find out what it decides next week, some members on, on it are very worried about the sustainability of this and think it could damage the British financial system. But as it happens, the whole my house is earning more than I am thing is an amazingly accurate illustration of one of the key themes of the most popular economics book of our time. Uh, uh, Thomas Piketty, the French economist, has produced this book, very worried about the, the rising wealth gap, and we met him today. When it comes to British summers, we've always been two nations. The rich do one thing, the poor sometimes do another. Now, one economist says the gap is growing, and it will all end badly. Thomas Piketty has thrown a theoretical Molotov into the economics world. He believes inequality is set to rocket, and in one simple formula, he's predicted doom. Thomas Piketty, this is your formula. R is greater than G. What does it mean? <laughs> well, this means that you know there is a tendency in the long run uh, for the rate of return to capital to be higher than the economy's growth rate. Or, in other words, you can make more money by owning things than you can by working or starting a business. The world, according to Piketty, looks like this. Before the First World War, the rich owned about five times the income of the world. Then, inequality dropped, reaching a low in the 1950s and 60s. It's climbed back to above four times now, and if things stay as they are, by the end of this century we'll be back to levels of inequality not seen since the days of Oliver Twist. To stop that, Piketty wants an 80% tax on high earners. He wants a global wealth tax and all banks to share data with all governments about what we actually own. Why don't we know how much wealth the rich have? Well, we have, you know, there's too little transparency about wealth. And in a way, you know, it was easier to observe wealth, you know, one century ago than it is today because also, you know, there was uh, less attempt to dissimulate wealth. So right now, you know, there are lots of cross borders. When you say dissimulate, as, what do you mean? Well, dissimulate, this can be, you know, putting your money in a bank in Switzerland. But not everybody agrees with Piketty. Last month, the Financial Times, in a front page exclusive, claimed he'd constructed some of his figures from thin air. R is greater than G. What does that mean? But if Piketty's formula is right, this is not just about economics. It foretells a moment when inequality becomes so great that the poor have had enough. And the social tensions of today look meagre. Back in the car. Well, earlier I discussed inequality with Thomas Piketty himself and Ryan Bourne from the Institute of Economic Affairs. I started by asking Professor Piketty about his proposal for an 80% tax rate on incomes over $500,000. Uh, you know, 80% tax rate would be a disaster if you were to impose it on everybody above 200, uh, above one or two million. Above 200. 200,000 uh, pounds or 200,000 dollars, but you know, above one million or above two million, you know, the historical evidence suggests that, you know, paying a managers 10 million instead of one or 50 instead of 10, you know, it's not that useful. You know, so above a certain point, you know, you just don't see in the data the extra managerial performance that you would like to see. He's not talking about 
whacking the rich, he's just talking about whacking the super rich. What's wrong with that? Well, there's lots of economic evidence and lots of counter-economic evidence, actually, that um, high rates of high marginal tax rates on, on high earners actually has a negative effect on growth. I know that some of your work suggests otherwise, but other, many other people have done work on this. So what um, did, what I'd suggest... Done, what sorry, sorry can, I just, can I just finish this point? I'd suggest it. that if you look at the history of the UK, for example, we had extraordinarily high tax rates in the 1970s, up to 98% on unearned capital income. That time wasn't a, a sort of productive egalitarian paradise in the UK. In fact, it was associated with the period of worst industrial relations that we've had um, uh, in the 20th century, and actually a decline in our relative performance uh, to other European countries. So there's, there, yeah. you know, it's potted history here. I no, think. look, I'm saying that the reason the UK was not doing very well in the 60s and 70s had more to do, in my view, but you know, we should have an open debate about this, with the uh, education system and the relatively low productivity of the labour force in the UK as compared to Germany, as compared to France at that time. And uh, so, you know, I, I don't think the, 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 the top tax rate was the primary explanation for that. And, you know, we've compared, you know, company by company, you know, when you pay managers 10 million instead of one, you know, do you get extra performance? And, you know, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you that, you know, you don't see it in the data. You know, if, I, if okay. it was there, you know, I would be happy then. to, wait, wait, to admit Talking it, of data, but, you know, the, the, uh, F, the FT has said that some of your numbers have been constructed out of thin air. Uh, this is wrong. You know, I have responded to that, you know, point by point. You know, I think they, they should not deny uh, that, you know, inequality, uh, you know, has been rising. And but, I, but I there, think that, they, that, they, it's not just they, the FT. It's not just the FT. It's the Office for National Statistics, our main statistical body. Because if, but, if, if the ONS is right, and if you look back at no, some of the other historical sources, it actually suggests that, OK, wealth inequality may have gone up a bit in the UK over the past 40 years. But it's not this huge sort of oh, extrapolation look, that actually... Okay, why is it so, why is it so in hard? Any case, you know, I agree. Let me just ask no, you this. Let me Why say is it that so agree. hard to measure the wealth of the very rich? Why is that so difficult to do? Well, because they tend to hide. You know, they don't want to, to, to report it to a survey. What we need is more transparency. About can, well, that's okay, one of your well, reasons that okay, you advocate can, a okay, global we not, wealth okay, tax. We can, well, we can argue about the extent of wealth inequality, but you'd admit, would you, that it matters? Um, it, depend, it depends, actually. And actually, I think one of the weaknesses of, of Thomas's book, which I think is a very interesting contribution to the debate, is that Barr sort of saying, oh, there's democratic implications, didn't really spell out why wealth inequality was necessarily a bad thing. And I actually think this is all a bit of a, a sideshow. If you look back at the history of the past 200 years, since we've sort of rolled out capitalist systems across the world, we've seen the most extraordinary improvement in the absolute living standards of, course, of yes. people all across the world. And we're seeing this in, in, in China and India at the moment. And global inequality, if you, if you take that measure, is actually falling. So I think we can get wrapped up in this very static look at the distribution of wealth or okay, the distribution wealth, of income at any one but time. But wealth inequality feels pretty rough if you're at the bottom of the pile, doesn't it? But that's poverty. They, you know, poverty feels very rough. I don't think inequality feels very rough per se. I mean, what's the causal mechanism by which inequality per se leads to um, uh, poorer living standards? I mean, that's poverty. That's yeah, not inequality. You, you know, you're, you're perfectly right. You know, inequality is not bad per se, and it's actually useful uh, up to a point, you know, to have inequality so as to get uh, innovation, so as to get growth, and certainly the enormous uh, improvement in living standards that we've seen over the past century, you know, I, I relies on some level of inequality. My point is simply that, you know, when inequality gets too extreme, then, you know, it becomes uh, useless for growth. It can, you know, it can even be bad for growth because it tends to lead to a large perpetuation of inequality over time and, and less mobility. You were in Parliament yesterday, I think you saw Ed Miliband among other people. Is he the man to translate your ideas into action, do you think? Look, I'm not going to take position, you know, on the, on the UK <laughs> He's political debate. He's taken a position on you, though. Debate. <laughs> Yeah, you know, again, I think these issues are beyond left and right. You know, we, we talk a lot with Ed Miliband about this mentioned tax issue. And, you know, as I told you before, you know, to some extent, this is a joint labor and conservative uh, product. And, and, you know, I think both parties should be uh, concerned about making it work okay. in a more efficient Did manner. And again, annual... Did you meet property the Tories tax, yesterday? Annual property tax. Uh, I, I don't think they invited me, but, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a very polite person and I usually respond to, to invitations.